Don't you find it weird that there's a lot of IT people like software engineers and engineers and just technical people that are really backing Palantir? Isn't that kind of odd? It's very actually pretty rare that uh, software engineers can agree on something, you know, of the same thing. <laughs> it's actually pretty uncommon. The only thing, the only thing that software engineers can really agree on is that project managers are basically like the scourge <laughs> of the community. <laughs> I'm just joking. If you're a project manager, my bad. Don't get offended, man. This is anyway. So. There's a reason for this, all this love from the technical staff for Palantir, right? And I've kind of talked about it in some other videos, guys, but just to recap on some of this stuff, the reason, at least for me, and I don't speak for everybody, but I'm just going to give you one of the reasons or a few of the reasons. And if you're a software engineer, let me know in the comment section below if I'm right or wrong. But one of the big reasons, guys, is the fact that, you know, engineers in general kind of are screwed with a lot, okay? We're, we're given a lot of tasks and things like that, but things are put in our way almost like roadblocks and people pretend like they're not roadblocks. Like for instance, not every job, but there's a lot of jobs where your day is literally littered with meetings for really, really dumb shit that you don't need to be a part of. Like you already have your marching orders, you're going to go and do your stuff, but for some reason, other people need to feel the need to tell you that you need to do something or find some sort of status. Like, hey man, so what's the status on this? Or where are you? Like, how far are you? It'll get done when it gets done, man. <laughs> okay, it's like, look at my track record, you know? Like if you, anyway, besides the point, I'm just ranting. But the point is, there's so many meetings. There's like this, you know, this agile thing that's happening. It's great, actually. It's very fantastic methodology. But the thing is, most people don't apply it properly and it ends up just convoluting the whole process. Basically, all I'm trying to say is, you get a task, but instead of it taking a day or something to complete where you can just completely have your day and you can do whatever you got to do, it ends up taking like three, four days because you're basically holding someone else's hand or you're you're explaining it to somebody before it even needs to be explained. There's so many different things that come into the way of engineers and really good companies are one of the companies that remove these roadblocks ahead of time. Like you can tell from the interview guys, this is why I think like, you know, crazy, stupid people are trying to apply for Google and stuff now. It's at that stage, but in the, in the early days, you know, they understood that this they need to they need to innovate at a certain pace and you can't keep putting roadblocks in front of your engineers if you're going to do that, right? Or else you're pretty much going to be dead in the water and can't compete. Secondly, really good engineers and, and a lot of engineers are great. It's just the ones that are really passionate about what they do. If you ask them, if you gave them a chance and you said, okay, I want you to, I want you have unlimited time and you can pick whatever language you want and I want you to build something that uh, basically, you know, is the best product that you can build and it does like a particular scope of thing. It would look something similar to like what Palantir is doing, only because this is the best way. This is the final iteration of how engineering products can potentially be. Like Palantir is from the culture videos and other things that I've heard, it seems like it's a very frictionless environment. There's not too many things that are that are causing these engineers to basically have these roadblocks in their path. Okay. So one of the other big reasons is that to actually build something like this where it's a big platform and then split it up is much easier once it's built. But the problem is it's damn near impossible to build something this concise. It's actually very difficult, mainly because in the engineering scope, there's like so many different languages, there are different methodologies, there, everyone comes with egos. And, and this is software engineer, guys. This is engineering. Like everyone has their, you know, whatever they think is right. This is why nobody agrees, right? Traditionally speaking, when products are actually built, right, they're built from a functional perspective. They look at what the problems are trying to solve. They'll, they'll look at like, you know, one or two different things. They'll say, okay, let's solve this, let's solve this, let's solve this. Right now, there's a whole sort of iteration of everything being microservices, like things are separated as, as much as possible because they're easier to deploy as each individual functional components, right? It's not, it's not like Palantir is not doing that, they are. When you build software like this, it's generally accepted that it's very fast, right? Because everything sort of it's in its own piece, but, and it's actually faster to develop as well because then you can basically function out, you can, you can hash out teams that do just like singular things or contextual things or whatever the case is, so you can split them up like that. But the problem is they're not exactly cohesive. And when you need to say, for example, piece it together and make something that, that, you know, has all of these things together and then sell that, it becomes a problem because then what if, what if they're written in different languages and what if the teams don't agree on certain things, there, there's, how do they, how are they going to talk to each other? There's a whole nother project that sits on top of that stuff, right? So this is why a lot of companies that, you know, they're focused on and selling this piecemeal sort of fashion, piecemeal fashion thing, they struggle right now with this larger picture with that Palantir has. And the reason they didn't do the larger picture is actually because it's very, like I was saying before, very difficult to build. So that's one of the reasons it's like part me, partly like speaking for myself, I'm looking at it. It's like, damn, they built like, they built this thing. They built this thing out really, really solid. It's like a massive platform. It's actually impossible to build. Now that they already have it, it's just a matter of how they're going to sell it. One of the reasons why companies also don't do this is because it's very, very difficult to sell. 
Now, it's different for something like a content management system or something, right? Where you are sort of like, if you're shopping for something like that, you're going to want that entire ecosystem. You don't want to just have like one, two different things and pay 16 different bills, right? This is enterprise though. So in enterprise, people always want different options, right? They're, they want, they want different things to work for different ways. And they want to know that they made the decision on different things, whatever the case is. There's lots of decision makers. That's why Palantir is hard to sell. But from an engineering perspective, it is a very, very important feat that they made. And like, at least for me, I'm able to recognize that and say, wow, that's a, that's amazing. Like the talent there must be amazing. I'm definitely investing in this company because this is the hardest part. The hardest part's already done, which is the project maturity, right? Like they've already finished the entire platform, which usually takes teams tens, 20, you know, huge amount of years that like Google has as a platform for some of the things like for advertising and things like that. It's very tough. They had to acquire some people to do that. Palantir didn't do that. They built everything in house, which means that it was super cheap to build, relatively speaking, of course. But also it's, you need a team that's like whoever built the core components and stuff, you got to keep those guys closed. So it's one of those things. It's like very difficult. It's hard to get, like everybody wants to go work at Google. Everybody wants to go work at Amazon, that kind of stuff, right? But it's hard to find a place that actually values your talent and wants you to do something that, you know, is actually going to make an impact in your life in terms of like, you'll be proud of building this thing, right? And on top of that, it's actually going to make a real difference because it's one entire massive thing rather than, you know, five, like you, you're not going to go home and be like, honey, I built this one function that does this one thing over there. You're going to say, I was a part and parcel and a very important member for building Foundry. And Foundry does blah, 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 has this many use cases. Yes, you know what I'm trying to say? I hope that was a little bit more clear. But yeah, I mean, let me know in the comment section below what you guys think. Maybe if I'm full of shit. I don't know. But uh, that's it for me. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.